Welcome back guys to another one. Traditionally, top-down coolers are a special breed because they offer you two main advantages over the standard tower coolers. Mainly in they can cool additionally in the surrounding area near the socket on your motherboard and of course they are highly compact. Thus today let's have a look at Be Quiet's recently released TF2 which takes things even further by offering a dual heatsink and dual fan setup. This is built for around 230 watts of TDP, so let's see it in action. This market segment of top-down coolers at this quality tier level is quite small. The only one that comes to mind is the Noctua C14S, which has a single heatsink design. Thus, the Be Quiet TF2 is truly unique with this dual heatsink and dual fan setup out of the box. It retails for around 86 bucks, and as you are about to see, you get a lot of bang for your buck. We have the signature Be Quiet packaging design with an all-black theme and minimalist yet elegant presentation. It supports all of the modern sockets and it's rated up to 230W TDP of CPU cooling. Inside the heatsink is well protected via this modular foam while the fans have their own separate boxes. Then the accessory box is sandwiched between the two parallel heatsinks. Regarding the supplied installation hardware and accessories, here is a detailed view. A very interesting fact comes in the form of two different intakes for the frames of the fans which makes them custom and bespoke for the Dark Rock TF2. Thus, the one on the left will reside in between the heatsinks and it's identical to the original TF, while the one on the right is the top one and it's the newly redesigned fan. Both are 135mm in size but the left one is a bit thinner at 22mm versus 25 for the right and belong from the famous top tier Silent Wings 3 PWM family of fans. With the help of the ribbed blades but 9 for the left fan and 6 for the right fan, they are rated up to 27 decibels of noise output at around 68 CFM of airflow. They both use a 6 pole rotor design and use fluid dynamic bearings which give them an unreal lifespan of around 300,000 hours of continuous operation or 34 years. The 4-pin PWM cable is fully braided and it's 220mm long, a spec which applies for both fans. The final difference between them comes from the maximum RPM, only 100 revs deviation between them, 1400 RPM for the middle fan versus 1300 for the top fan. Now let's inspect the intricate and elegant design of the Dark Rogue TF2. Right off the bat, the all-black ceramic coating looks amazing. Then the top heatsink has a brushed aluminium top cover with the Be Quiet logo which gives the cooler an unmistakable beefy look. This is also the first visual cue versus the original version which lacks the cover and where you saw the capped heat pipes. As stated in the intro, what makes the Be Quiet TF series unique is the dual heatsink design with the primary and secondary one. For the main heatsink we have 62 aluminium heatsinks with cutouts by the 21st one when counting from the heat pipes, which facilitates the access for the securing bolts from the lower contact plate. Also the main top heatsink houses both sets of rubber anti-vibration pads, since both fans will attach to it. Then the cutouts in the fins are present as well in the lower heatsink. Speaking of, the lower smaller heatsink has 31 aluminium fins. Then, if you can believe it, the top of the contact plate has its own very own compact separate heatsink. Assembly-wise, the top heatsink takes full advantage from the 6mm thick 6 heat pipes which converge into the copper nickel plated base plate, while 4 of them continue into the smaller heatsink, thus completing the cooling circuit. Lastly, the contact plate has an almost mirror finish and it's slightly convex. When you attach the fans, make sure that a 9 bladed thinner fan goes in between the heatsinks. Also, each fan has its own wire clips. Even with both fans attached, the Dark Rock TF2 is barely 134mm in height. This is an incredible advantage over the regular tower heatsinks because you can install the TF2 in way smaller enclosure and still get a lot of cooling potential, like the famous and popular NKSM1. As we saw with the recently released Shadow Rock Slim 2, Be Quiet has updated the mounting hardware as well with the Dark Rock TF2, and thus everything is a breeze, especially on the AM4 socket. Make sure you remove the stock front plastic brackets while retaining the stock metal backplate. Install the black AM4 spacers with the correct orientation, then secure the metal brackets in the corresponding holes. Apply the thermal paste and then bolt everything down. Luckily, with the TF2 you can even install it with the fans attached, which saves you a lot of headaches. 
Don't forget the fan 2-in-1 adapter to plug it in the CPU port from the motherboard. Now let's inspect for any clearance issues. This particular RAM kit is 53mm tall in its highest point since it has a V-shaped design to the heatsink. As you can see there is even 1mm left from this angle. The official spec is 49mm with a second fan attached but if you use kits that are taller than this, by removing the second fan you will have up to 73mm. As you can see there is plenty of room left on the CPU side even with this abnormally thick backplate from the graphics card. Finally onto the VRM side, the heat pipes are miles away and thus the TF2 truly delivers on its compact design. Testing time. Let's start in order of CPU load difficulty. First up is the Cinebench R15 test. On the left we have the CPU in stock form while on the right we have it overclocked. The Be Quiet Dark Rock TF2 achieves its goal and beats the Noctua C14S. The second heatsink and extra fan really give it the additional cooling headroom. In the R20 test, since this one is more demanding on the CPU, there is a quick reshuffling of the ranks and a very interesting battle in the OC scenario around the mid 70s mark, but still the TF2 manages to maintain, at least empirically, its lead over the C14S. Ada just reconfirms the results from R20 and thus the hierarchy is preserved once more. Rise of the Tomb Raider isn't pushing the CPU that much and the results are really good. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Finally, the noise output is one of the hallmarks here and the Dark Rock TF2 proves to be one of the quietest options in this tier level. Well, there you have it guys, the small tweaks and upgraded mounting system implemented to the Dark Rock TF2 have made it such a potent air cooler. Its uniqueness in the form of a dual heatsink design and dual fan setup, from a top-down perspective, should have brought some disadvantages as well, but Be Quiet has managed to negate any clearance issues and even offer plenty of RAM headroom as well with both fans attached. This fact alone that you can have a 230W TDP capable air cooler under 134mm tall makes it a clear winner. Add the near silent operation from the excellent Silent Wings 3 PWM 135mm fans, all of these make the Dark Rock TF2 the benchmark for all top down air coolers. So how many of you guys still have the original variant in the NK M1 or are you planning to upgrade to this one? Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Alex out.